All right. Well, we got Nate Tansman again. What's up, my friend? How Welcome to the doing, Junkyard man? Love Podcast again. Ooh, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I'm happy it's to have It's a regular you. thing now. It's definitely going to be a regular thing, and we're going to just both be improving together out loud. And so in order to do that, we got to be making sure everybody's willing to accept change. Ain't that right? So yeah. Nate and I have been talking a lot about change and how important it is for like our lives, you know, me, but you know, you've been going through a lot of change and it's, it's hard to have other people around us not fully accepting it or understanding how, how insane and in-depth change really is. So yeah. let, let, let's get going on change. What, what's your feelings on this? It's crazy. As I've had so many positive, 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 um, I would say responses to the stuff that I'm trying to do, the YouTube, um, the messages, you know, that I just break down in everyday life, the, the way that I'm trying to help people. But the craziest part is that the people that I thought would be supporting me are the people that almost fail to see it, which is, okay. it's almost like they think it's a persona that I'm putting off. They don't think that it's real change. They think it's like, Oh, well, you know, that's what's popular right now is growth and change and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, I, this is what I'm living, you know, like I, because I've seen results and because I've seen change in, in not only in myself, but the deliveries that I do, I've seen change in other people already. And I've, you know, people are reaching out to me that I don't even know. And are like, yo, you're changing my life. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you're dropping truth bombs yeah. and waking people up. I, I, wa I watch, I watch one of your videos. This girl messaged me. She's from California. She rides. I was in a restaurant and I was watching one of your videos and I just started crying and I'm like, and I, I talk about this thing. I have this quote and I was like, shout out to the, the, uh, the strangers that show more love than the neighbors. And it's, I was, you know, the people that, are, you know, like I said, the people that I really thought were going to be supportive. Uh, I think they're, they don't think that I'm really about it. And, and, and it's hard for, they, they aren't allowing you to change from the view that they have of you. Yes. So not, so I've changed, but their view on me hasn't changed. And so, you know, I think a lot of people, especially people that I've known for the longest, they're like, what's he doing? Like, he ain't like that. Like yeah. he, he ain't deep like that. I know you, bro. Yeah, I know you ain't deep like that, yeah. but it's like, we used to blah, blah, blah when we were in sixth grade. Hey, like, exactly. Dude, we don't have room in this world to stay our no. sixth grade selves yeah. anymore, man. It's yeah. not going to happen. It ain't, it ain't happening. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's been a little bit of wake up, but at the same time, I'm embracing every part of it. Like maybe, you know, I have this difficulty f trying to figure out whether I'm around to help that person and help them grow and help them, help them, you know, level up and, and, in doing that in everywhere I can, because that's what I want to do. I want to serve and I want to be able to, to help everybody around me. So am I there to help them or am I outgrowing them? Right. You know what I mean? And that's been hard for me because I'm like, okay, so in who I am and in who I want to be, everybody thinks I got to figure it out. You know what I mean? A lot of people, especially from the outside people, you know, like, you know, bro, I can't wait to be like that. I can't wait to be like you. I can't wait to be, you know, have everything, you know, like I don't have to figure it out. I, I, I'm still trying to, to figure out, well, does the Nate that, that I'm supposed to be is the Nate that I'm trying to be. Does he look at people and say, you ain't, you're not matching my energy. Do I leave you behind or do I pick you up hmm. and bring you with me? And wow, I, that's and powerful. I think it's situational, but I, I want to bring people with me. Yeah, you definitely do. I mean, I feel like so many stories you, you tell me are, are of you taking the extra time to stay behind and mm -hmm. be like, I'm not willing to just, yeah. to just, we, we don't have the same energy. So see you later. You, you aren't like that. You do really try to, to bring people with you first. I tell, um, I'm still, I'm st again, I don't have it all figured out. So I'm still working. I would dude. I would absolutely love to quit my job and just pursue this and just, you know, go all in. But I, you know, matter of time. It, it's a matter patience. of time. Patience. The ego wants it right now. My, my boss, um, she's very like quick to cut people off and no grace. And, and, uh, I have a great relationship with her. And, you know, I told her like, you know, she like, you know, we need to get rid of so-and-so. And, -so. and I told her, I was like, I will not fire anybody. I will help them. And I will, I will give them the ultimatum and I will say, you will change with me or you will quit, but I will not fire you. 
And I told her the reason that I'm like that is because if someone didn't give me that grace, not in my professional life, but in my personal life, I wouldn't be here right now. I, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be sitting here with you. I wouldn't, I don't know where I would be. So if someone didn't give me that, no, I'm not going to let you stay down on the ground. I'm going to pick you up. And every time you fall, I'm going to pick you up. Even when you can't pick yourself up, I'm going to pick you up. If someone didn't do that for me, I wouldn't be here. So I, I won't leave people behind. But also, too, like I said, I don't have it all figured out. Do I work on myself, work on myself, work on myself and build up this this energy and this this capacity to where I never run out of gas? And that way I can pick up as many people as I want. Or do I pick up people along the way? And do I am, am I sacrificing myself? A little bit, just a little bit. You know what I mean? I don't think I'm sacrificing right. myself, but I mean, right. in a way, you, I'm you, spending time on my own progression to you, help you somebody else. You filled your cup so much that it's that it's falling, fall, yes. falling over. Yeah, it's pouring over. Yeah, uh, you've got a little bit to give, so you're giving it. Exactly. So you know, I I battle that sometimes. I'm like, you know, am I not am I wasting my time? Because I don't ever think help is a waste of time. Because like I said, if someone didn't help me, I wouldn't be here. But there's times where I'm like, you know, if I get to it, if I level up again, I have more to give. Do I, am I in a spot to be helping this person basically is what I kind of think about sometimes like mentally, like, do I need to learn more? Do I need to have more experience in order to help this person? And so, you know, I battle that. I battle that sometimes, but at the same time, I'm like, if I just believe in myself, like, yo, you can help this person. Like I want to pour, I want to pour, I want to pour. And that's, my goal and someone asked me that like what's your goal with all this like what is and it's to never run out of gas never like i can i'm so confident myself i'm so confident i'm so confident in my ability i'm so confident in what i do and what i stand for that no matter what you do to me no matter what you say to me no matter what your actions are i'm never going to take it personal and i'm gonna and i'm gonna bring you with me and i and my i have this vision of like what nasty Nate is and what, what, what the business is and what, the, what the movement is. And I just like have this picture of like me and it's like a picture of my face and this, and then this camera just like walks out, you know, walks backwards. And it's just like a bunch of people behind me. Yeah, and I brought all these people with me, like in every sense of the word, like really? they were, they were lost and, and, you know, and they, and they heard my voice and, and they came to it. You know what I mean? Or, right. Bro. It's, okay. So one of my favorite artists is John Bellion. He okay. has this video for, uh, he, uh, he designed the art for it. And I think he drew it up, uh, for luxury is the name of the video. Essentially it's the, through the whole video is him over his years. And he's got this, uh, uh, he, he's like afraid of his monsters. He's afraid of the dark. He's got this candle and he's like, oh, there's demons everywhere he's running from. But over through his career, he shows that he tells this story of by the end of it, he's alone in this black room and he's got his candle and he's like, uh, you know, like early ages, 20s, like yeah. he's where he is now. Yeah, yeah. And then he starts to notice little lights flicker around at the end of the music video and he sees all the people with their candles that he gave wow. permission, you know. Wow. It's a, you know, it's, it's a deep in- interpretation of the movie, but that's how it is, you know. When, when you stay strong in the dark with your flame, you know, eventually the people who are in the dark and like, man, I've been watching that flame for a while. Like, is he doing something like, is he, you know, should we do that? Mm -hmm. And then they light theirs and they they get permission. So you're doing that. I I mean, it's, it's hard. It's it's worth every second, but, but feeling that you're going to lose friends or lose family or be misunderstood because people aren't allowing you to change Uh is just, it just seems a world where we don't allow change seems, what, what can we possibly get done? Yeah. I think that's one of the, like I said, it's one of the things that I still battle is like, you know, I, I, I love who I am right now. I really do. But it's like, if you can't see me for who I am, like, is that is that going against my end goal is to leave you behind? You know what I mean? So as much as as much as I know what I want, that's something that I ponder all the time is that, I'm confident in this. This is what I want. This is who I am. This is who I'm supposed to be. And I will not give it up. I can't because I, I refuse to go back. Right. Like I was in the deepest, it's just not you anymore. I was in the deepest, deepest depths of depression and what it is to just be miserable. Like every day I woke up in misery. Every day I woke up and hated what I was doing, hated who I was, hated what I represented. I will not go back there, but 
was I connecting with those people because they were that as well? And mm-hmm. can they connect with the higher me? You gotta wonder. You know what I mean? Hmm. So I think about that as much as, you know, I, I, now I'm in this place where I don't overthink. I still think, you know, I still have my times where I'm laying in bed and I can't sleep. Cause I'm like, yo, like, you know, these people have, you know, been your friends for so long and, uh, family members, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, it's tough. do you leave them behind? And, and, and when I really, really think about it, the answer is no, because that's not what I stand for. And that's not what like my, my mission is. But at the same time, it's like, I can only, you can't see the light if you don't want to see it. Well, dude, well, you got to control your own energy too. Exactly. About that. I mean, mm-hmm. you giving all your energy to trying leaves you with nothing for yeah, yourself. Yeah. So I made up this thing. I call it like the energy bank, right? So everybody's finances are different. Everybody's got a different amount of money, you know? And, and so I made it up like a card, like, certain people can only spend so much like you can wake up like people that differ between you and I can wake up and they can go get gas then go get lunch then go get dinner and they're just boom 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 swipe swipe Ching. so on Amazon you know what I'm saying all day people like us that are trying to do something and we're budgeting and we're you know we're working less to work on our passion like we only have so much to spend mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and I feel it's the same way with your energy like when you build your energy up I can all day, bro, all day. Like it's nothing. But if you're in a spot where you haven't built that up and you're so negative and I feel like you have positive energy and you got negative energy, especially, you know, in your persona, like when we talked about the good wolf, the bad wolf, the good energy, the bad energy, the monster, the waking up on the other side of the bed, whichever one you're going to, whichever one you're feeding, how much can I spend? Some people are spending negative energy all day. Right. And I, then asking why. Like and then why, asking yeah, why. why. So tired yeah, and you're areas. just giving it out, giving it out, giving it out. Right. But you only have so much good, positive energy to give out one day. They might give it out right when they wake up. Like they might give it to their spouse and then boom, they're miserable at work. Give it to their phone. Give it to their phone. They're miserable at work. They're miserable after work. Those are the people that have road rage. Like when you cut somebody off and you're like, oh, you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And they're freaking out, flipping you off and That's cussing crazy. at you. That I use that the road rage thing. So I think that my my goal is to just build up this bank where I'm all positive. Of course, you can't control everything, so I'm gonna have those thoughts sometimes. But you be ready to handle them. I'm just like, them. let me let me swipe it on you. Like let me give it out, give it out, give it out. Like I got so much. The way that like the way people spend, I can just give this energy out all Giving day. Out loans, swiping it, swiping it, it. Exactly, and that's that's my goal. And it's but in that change. Can I do that with certain people that don't want it? You know what I mean? Because then am I dumping into cups with holes in them? Yeah. And does that exhaust me? I don't know yet. Well, I'm, but I'm willing to try it and willing to find out. Yeah. I mean, I've, I I did the same thing. I, I had friends that I... I just had to, I had to be clear and like, I, I can't do this thing that we're doing anymore. And for, for, the, for these things, it was negativity. I was like, I, you know, I'm finding my own brain here. I, I, I hope that you would understand. I don't want to be around this negativity. And, you know, it's obviously a more in-depth conversation than that, but that's the essence of what I said. And it didn't go well. And I haven't talked to that friend since. It's been over a year. And that was one of my, yeah. my very good friends. Um, and that I think that that's important. But it, I, I, I will say that I did try. You know, I, uh-huh. I tried to, to, to help him understand change. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it, it's a hard conversation. We, we don't really have conversations about change. Mm-hmm. We don't have conversations yeah. about... It's uncomfortable. Like, hey, please understand it's why so I'm asking uncomfortable. you what I'm Yeah, it's yeah. so uncomfortable. I, I had to I have an experience <clears throat> like that, too. I have a buddy who um, was drinking a lot, drinking a lot, very violent when he was drinking. Um, all the time, you know, I would tell him, because I was in a spot where... We knew each other. We did that. I moved forward. I stopped drinking. I don't drink at all. I don't I don't use any kind of drugs. I don't smoke weed. I don't nothing. And you know, he's still in it, which is fine. I love you, you know, for who you are. That's that's completely okay. But when I see it destroying your life, then I have a problem. Because I care about you, because I'm your friend, because I want better for you. A lot of people look at um you know who Charlemagne the God is? Of course. Yeah. Um I heard him say this one thing that silence is a cosign and it blew my mind. Right. And so I'm like, Dang, if I don't, if I don't say anything, I'm cosigning to, to him ruining his life. 
and that was hurting me. So I told him, I said, bro, I really think you need to consider stop drinking. You have a lot of things going in your life. You got school, you have a good job. You're trying to be a manager. You got a baby on the way. And you know, he was like, you're right, you're right, you're right. And I think in loving somebody, you have to hold them accountable too. I saw him at the this club that my girl worked at the next weekend, and I was like, I'm done, bro. Oh, I'm done. That, Haven't yeah. talked to him since. Been but your energy there, you know. But it not, you know, it's not that he was affecting me; is that he was affecting himself, and I and I love him enough to not allow him to do that. Like oh, I can see that totally. You I, know I totally what I mean? What and, and so, but in that, like we talked about before, a lot of people think it at that time that that relationship is over and that it's done because as millennials when we're sensitive when we're sensitive and when we take things personal it's done forget about it forever forget about it whole life talk to me no never never again i never 70 i'll punch you in the face if i see you exactly (laughs) that's crazy i never think that the relationships are anything for that matter dreams or relationships jobs everything i never think anything is broken like I like that. Thank you for that. Yeah. I feel like I feel like I have some some thinking to do about that. I, I myself. never think that anything's broken. I think things can always be fixed right. in love and friendships and relationships. And so when he's ready and and you know what's crazy, sometimes they even think, What if I wasn't ready? Like even though he was being destructive, what if I'm not the best Nate? And what if that Nate didn't give him that message that he needed? What if I didn't hit the correct nerve and the second that I'm just I keep getting better and I keep my speaking keeps getting better and my thinking keeps getting better and I keep getting more Mm. analytical and more deep I can hit him exactly where he needs to be hit right so maybe I wasn't ready maybe it wasn't him yeah or maybe it just the far different just the difference in where you guys were in your life led you to miscommunicate hardcore you were saying I love you so I need to do these things and all he hears is and and you're not on my side exactly and what is I think so special about that is that how many people can do that how many people can look at somebody else and, and and clearly see as a as what's normal that that person's messing up but i can look at myself and go you know what maybe you had something to do with that maybe you didn't say the right message even though you're sober even though you work even though you don't drink even though you save your money even though you do all this shit that's normal maybe you were the problem i i am okay with taking that responsibility in saying that Maybe I didn't communicate the best. Maybe I could have loved him more. Maybe if I knew him better, maybe I could have got through to him. You got to be careful taking responsibility that's not yours, though. You know, sometimes we put it like definitely with your passionate, motivational like mm-hmm. side of, mm-hmm. of going all in on everything. Yeah. Like you got to make sure that you ain't going, going all in on yourself. I agree. Too, you know? Yeah, I agree. Th- th- there's a balance. I, it ain't easy. I don't think there's yeah. an answer. In yeah. That. I think that it's something that we're on the process of learning. Yeah. Again. And I, you know, I battle that sometimes I'm like, gosh, should I give up too early? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, but, but I, I want that. Like I said, I want that just just full tank, just no, no running out of gas. Like I want that. Like I want to be able to like, if he walked up to me and wanted to talk to me there, if I saw him, I wouldn't reach out to him over the phone. But I, if I saw him, I would talk to him. I would tell him I loved him. I would say, let's work this out. No, no questions asked. No, no grudges held. No, nothing. Well, something that you learn just even outside of if you had an argument or not, when you see like someone who you haven't seen for a long time, like this, something that, you know, as we, as we approach the age of 30 and stuff, I mean, there is that connection like oh we are friends there's this connection still there that like it sucks to have to fight that with like oh we're friends i care about this person but we got this thing so i you know good for you for being willing to to approach that do you want to uh i want to talk about uh change at like holidays i think that's a good place for listeners to think about um so christmas coming up Uh, you know we walk through that door and a lot of times our family is like here's this 15 year old ashley Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and ashley's like i'm a grown woman I'm 30. Yeah. Like you, you're not letting me be 30. Like yes. let me be an adult. Let me have a conversation with you. I'm allowed to have an opinion. You know, I, I think a lot of a lot of the you know little advice that I give with people about their relationship with their parents now, it's a lot of that. It's a lot of their parents don't seem to be letting them be the be the woman or be mm-hmm. the man that they are now. Yeah, I I think that was the same thing that I was talking about with you know the friends or people that are around me that don't see the new me, and don't see what I'm trying to live. It's it's similar. It's like because you don't see these people all the time like you might have family members that you see you know just on christmas like once a year so they're stuck in where you've always been and 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 not exactly where you're at and and like i said it 
I, I posted a video about love the other day on YouTube. Stepping outside yourself. If I only think, if I have this opinion of Jake that when I met you, like, I didn't know a whole lot about you. All I knew is that I was like, yo, we both got nice hair. Like, we're both tatted. Like, we both, we both jacked. Like, that's all I know about you. So if I look at you now, I'm like, all right, Jake's still tatted. Like, Jake's still in good shape. Jake has nice hair. That's all I think about you. But I'm like... <laughs> I got to step outside me to love you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. people don't do that. Your family members don't do that because they're so concerned about what they think and what they think's right. Everyone thinks that their opinion's right. Nobody's open-minded. So if I think that Ashley is the same Ashley that she was last year, well, what room. am I going to think? Yeah, there's no, there's no room for that. And there's no room for allowing new things. So I really think it comes down to stepping outside yourself, seeing where that person's at and accepting it you know and like i said a lot of people haven't accepted the fact that this is me and this is the me that's here to stay i'm not going back like i'm not you're not getting me like i always tell people that like mm -hmm. when people try to i don't say it out loud but when i hear a negative thought or i hear something that was from before i hear you know people wanting me to you know you know like go talk to that girl or go you know let's just do shots like you know let's just do this i in my head i'm like you're not getting me mm -hmm. like you know you will not get me. I will not break. Yeah, this beast is too tough. And, and and it's crazy because people think it's so easy just to say no. But like all those thoughts come back. All those feelings come back. All of that that rush of like. It's a cork. You could, a, you could easily just do this. Too, exactly. Man. And just let it all out. And I'm just, I take it so serious. And I'm just like, you not get me. Like I'm not going back there because it was hell. Mm -hmm. And I refuse to live in it. And so. When you keep going back and, and just, just grabbing one more and ripping other people out of there. Yeah, and it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a scary thought, but I feel like I've always, I've always been able to have that control in what I want, and so I just tuned it somewhere else. I've always like, okay, like, you know, I, I know I can get up early. I know I can eat right. I know I can do this, so let me tune that into everything in my life. And it was shutting out things that I didn't want I just allowed so many things in my life that I didn't want and I just let kept letting it happen like oh you know like it'll get better it's okay it, bad things don't get better you get better and you change the bad things stay the bad things and they stay where you're at and you got to shut them out and so I had to learn how to do that I had to learn how to be disciplined with positive thinking and I had to learn how to be disciplined and not letting negative creep into me and creep into right. my creep into my zone and creep into my area like I'm like you not getting me stay away stay yeah. away you train yourself every day with that train shit it too. yeah every day I wake up and I'm like I, I, I'm positive I read my my affirmation I read my word I read my everything is is positive and if it's like if it's negative I don't have time for it mm -hmm. I really don't mm -hmm. and it's hard again with the change. It's hard to think that some people might not ever get there that you love, that you want to be there with you. That I'm like, it's like getting trying to get somebody to jump over like a, like jump over like a little stream, and they and they're scared of water. You know, it's like yo, the other side is where we want to be. Mm -hmm. Like yo, it's dope over here. Like if you You're can like, just, I know it looks scary, but it's a stream. I'm yeah, over it. Yeah, if you can just see over the, because it's not hard. Yeah. It's not hard to get there. It's really not. It's a, it's making a decision. You just have to decide. This is how I'm gonna live my life. This is how I'm gonna do it. This is how I'm going to stay positive. This is how I'm going to get to where I'm going. And you commit to it and you do it every single day. And I'm like, yo, I can see over this hill. You should see all the stuff that Life you, gets crazy everything better. that, everything that you want is over this hill. You just got to get over the stream to do it. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Just come on. Come on. I think that people think that they can't change, man. We've got this like thing where we're like, no, it's in my DNA. It's in my genetics. It's my like, man, man. What you tell yourself is what you are, what you commit to, what you identify as. That is what you are. Right. That's who you are. If you tell yourself, I've had this conversation with people about DNA in alcoholism and drugs and all that kind of stuff. With where I was mentally, I think everything is possible. Change is so possible no matter where you're at. I f I'm going to cross a, a line here that's going to maybe, I don't believe in it you're not an alcoholic because your parents were you're not a drug addict because your parents were 
as much as it can be in your blood, I don't buy it, dude. Like, I know it's science, but I think that the facts, I think that your mind beats facts any day. I think that that energy beats facts any day. And I just, I, whatever you tell yourself you are is what you are. If you tell yourself that story of uh, my parents are alcoholics, this is what I know. This is what I, that's what I did. My dad didn't show me how to be a good partner. I don't know how to be a man in a relationship. Well, if I just commit to that, cause that's what I did. I would tell all my, all my girls, well, why, why do you cheat on me? Why do you do this? Why do you do that? Why do you, I don't know how to do it. Sorry. I don't you know just how. Accept that. That's I, how I am. You accept it. That's yeah. how I am. My dad made me this man. Whatever made me. This Nobody man. showed me how to be a good partner. Yeah, Nobody yeah. showed me how to love a woman. Nobody. My mom could tell me as much as I can, but when you see an example, I did what I saw. I was I was mentally abusive. I was emotionally abusive. I cheated. I I didn't treat anybody with respect because that's what I saw. That's what I saw as normal. So I committed to that. This is how I am. That's exactly what I said. I said, I'm my dad's son. The apple don't fall, fall from the tree. Just it's get, almost like a weird pride that just your get ego with tries it. to take in that. You're like, whatever, fuck it then. Yeah, whatever. This is who I am. And I, I think that it's bullshit. We're being misdirected, and we think that's where we're stuck. What do you want to do when you want to learn something? You learn about it. So that's what I'm doing. I read books. Like, people think it's funny because... I don't dabble in things that I, that I don't want. And people think it's weird because I'm single. Like when we I like talk about girls on Instagram and stuff, I'm like, I don't look at that. And they're like, why not? You're single. I'm like, cause I know my girl wouldn't want that. Well, who's your girl? I don't know. But Training. I know that I know that she Training. wouldn't, she wouldn't like that. You know what I mean? I don't right now like we talked about before i'm i'm celibate like i know that my girl wouldn't want me sleeping around i don't know who my girl is i really don't i don't know who she is but i know she wouldn't want me sleeping but around you know your starting line is is farther different than other people so you got to work a little harder and so exactly. instead of being in the victim role and saying yep. i can't change this is just how i am i need a girl who's going to match these whatever you're like no i got to start back here but i'm willing to change i'm gonna i'm gonna get that head start back here it's just fine you and, know? and i think it's learning how to play your cards like right. Yo, when you're some people, when you're born, you might be get born ace, king, queen, whatever, right? That's not what I was dealt in the relationship department. I did not get dealt a good hand in the relationship department. What am I gonna do? Go fish. That's what you're gonna do. I'm gonna analyze my my deck. Yeah. And I'm gonna see how to play it. Oh, play but it. I, okay, all right. Or shuffle. Or yeah. just get a whole new deck. You know what I mean? Right? But I, I have to. Like you said, the starting point. Like I started way behind. But what am I gonna do? Say, forget it. Give up. Oh, well, I guess I can't do racing. it. Yeah, can't, can't do can't it. Even go on this I'm going to untie my shoes and go home. I ain't qualified to race. Exactly. But now, <laughs> I mean, I read books on relationships. I read how to be a good partner. Right. And people think it's crazy because I'm not in a real... Why do you need to know that? Because when I'm ready, I'm going to be ready. Mm. Millennial is, I will not do something until I see a reward. You will not even get me to start until I see a reward. You have to do it beforehand. What if somebody asks me to speak and I've never spoke before? Am I a speaker if I can't do it? You have to have faith, man. I got to have the ammo ready. Yeah. Like I got to, I have, bro, I got ammo right now. If somebody walked in this room and was like, let's, let, I need you to speak a message to my team. Done. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. Same thing with my relationship. If I don't, if I'm not ready, how can I do it? Right. I'm going to walk into a relationship as a man and I'm going to be like, you don't need to teach me nothing. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. Like, you're coming with me. I'm leading this. Let's go. And you're the one who's responsible for this. Every because morning. I've learned it. Because I've learned it. And I've yep. studied it. And I've trained and I'm trained myself. I'm no longer cheating. I no longer have a wandering mind. I no longer think about other women. Because I have control of that part of me. Right. That's what it takes. You have to work on the weak stuff and make it better. Right. And that's how you complete, you know, what you're doing. Yeah. Fuck yeah, bro. Well, I, I, I think that that's something we could always come back and explore. Change. Change is a huge thing. You know, this podcast is about change, really. It's about believing that you can change. So, I mean, I think that we're going to come circle back around this. I think that anything that we can do to convince people that 
you don't have to suffer where you're at. You aren't the victim. You can change. And when someone else is like telling you that you can change, they're doing it out of love. I think that's an important thing. So accepting change, allowing change, making room for change. It's so important. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. It's all in your head by Russ. Would you recommend that book? Oh yeah. 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 Dude, Russ, he, he's dope. I was, I was following him at the beginning of SoundCloud days. I feel like I always feel the obligation to say that. Like, yo, I've been on him yeah. since the beginning. Underground, underground. Yeah, no, I, I always he- I could like him though. Um, uh, all right, man. Well, so w- what I want to talk about a little bit is uh, we do got New Year's coming up. Yeah. Uh, I talked with my friend Spencer um, on the podcast about like our our resolutions. We're gonna sit down together and kind of write them out. We're actually like gonna have that. a little podcast where we're gonna like, like me and him are gonna work on ours together too out loud. Maybe somebody else can follow along with a pen. So mm-hmm. that's coming up. But uh, in the meantime, you're a very motivational person, and uh, we're gonna get a lot of benefits from from talking about what what your aspects and what your thoughts are around New Year's resolutions here. So let's dive into that, man. New Year's resolutions, setting goals. Okay, um, New Year's resolution. I think New Year's resolution is about action. Right. Action. Um, I see a Pull lot. Pulling down a little bit on you. Yeah. Um, I see a lot of people, especially January, January is like the hardest month for me to be in the gym because there's, so, dude, there's so many people in the gym. I feel like every year I want to take January off because I'm <laughs> no, like, that's how I was and like. then I can go in February and like the gym will be clear again. It's so funny though. I never want to like, even when I'm joking about that, I'm always like, please don't make yourself feel that you're a burden by going to the gym. Yeah. E- even when I joke about that, I'm always like, man, I hope that little joke or whatever, that little complaint that I let myself have is not stopping people from like, I don't want to be another one who yeah. ruins everyone's gym. You I, know what I mean? I, I think, I want to say health in, in every aspect, mental and physical, I think should be everybody's top, top priority. Because I think that's, before everything if you're not mentally and physically healthy you can't do anything you can't grind you can't work you can't make you can't increase your income you can't, show up for you, yourself. You can't so that's what's most important and i think that's what should be on everybody top of everybody's list is physical and mental health so okay well, well what's what's that mean to you what's uh i think in every sense of the word progression if you don't feel good about yourself you don't want to do anything but how do you do that you have to make yourself feel good about yourself you have to do things that set you up to make you feel good and that's like a lot of times when people ask me like you know how do you have so much energy for this how do you have so much energy for that I do things that make me feel good some of those things I wish didn't make me feel good like I really don't feel good waking up after six I really don't like I feel great like it's a mental win for me to get up as early as I can, but I know it's not good for my mental, so I have to fight that. Like you, I, you, you mean like so you're saying like if you oh I had a late night last night, but I still want to get up at five a.m. Yeah, no matter what. It, it makes me it makes me feel like I'm grinding, right? Right. So yeah. um, grinding is about balance, though. Balance, We've got grinding yeah. wrong. Yep. The hustling yep. grinding thing got a little too muddy, I think. Yeah. I, so I, um, I make sure that my mental is taken care of before my physical and in, in doing that, I got, I got to get rest, but I, I really, I really want this year. I think everyone needs to take their mental and physical health, physical health, especially very serious. If you look at yourself and, and you're consistently doing things to help you be more healthy in a physical way, your confidence level goes up, your confidence level goes up. Like I feel good. Like I'm, I'm being consistent. I'm caring about myself. That's self love is to take care of what you have, taking care of your body, taking care of your mind, taking care of, even though, you know, I I don't want to make this about physical and make it about flesh because I, I, I firmly don't believe in that. What you are given, this is your motor. Your body's your motor. If you don't take care of it, it's not going to drive. Yeah, that's you, you got to start is. there. We think that we need to go and like just show up at the gym feeling like crap and just run through a workout and just, you know, force through it. I yeah. feel like there's so many steps before that that people do miss out. There really is. Yeah. I uh, actually wrote down um, for New Year's and your New Year's fitness goals. I wrote down uh, some things that I want to touch on. Okay. Yeah. Let's explore these. Uh, number one, I talked about in our last meeting uh, check your ego. 
people get so worried about what they're going to look like in the gym. Well, I'm out of shape. So when I go in the gym, there's all these people that are in shape. I'm going to look stupid. I don't want to wear a certain thing because I, I, I don't want, I'm over, I'm overweight. I'm fat. I'm this, I'm that. I don't know how to use the weights. I don't know how to use the machines. I don't know how to use any of it. If your ego is involved and you care what people think and you're embarrassed, you're not going to continue to go because everybody has a learning. It's, it's learning for everybody. I, I didn't know what I was doing. When I first started lifting in sixth grade, of, of course the PE teacher would direct us a little bit, but I would literally walk up to the machine. There's those little drawings on there. I would read it and I would be like, okay, this works my chest. Mm-hmm. I do lay I down, my chest. I lay down, I go up and I go down. Even if you don't do it right, you're gonna figure out how to do it right. Mm-hmm. When I was in sixth grade, I remember doing the flat bench thing. I only used my arms. So I wasn't using my chest, but this, there was one time where I felt it in my chest and I was like, oh, that's what it's supposed yeah, to feel like. Right. Like, and then I changed the way I laid on the bench and I changed my posture and right. I changed all these things. But because I didn't care, I'm like, yo, I'm just here to, I'm here to get better. Like, it's not about what you think about me. I'm here to get better. You have to check that part of yourself. Yeah. Because you if be you- willing to fail. You have to be willing to fail because if you don't, like, you're never even going to start. You know, I, I do this with uh, with basketball. Basketball is something I never played organized sports growing up, but basketball, uh, I have a, a hoop in the driveway. Mm-hmm. And now that I, I, if I'm not touring, I'm working from home. And so I'm, I've got to do things to keep sane and go outside. Yeah, so absolutely. I shoot basketball and I have been getting better and better. But something that I noticed that I had to fight at the beginning, which was something I didn't even know existed in my brain was uh, like a car would drive by, I'd be, I'd be in my bag, I'm in my zone, and a car would drive by, and I would notice like, I would kind of posture as if like, okay, I gotta, I gotta make sure I'm making this shot just in case they see it, or yeah, I've gotta, weird. I gotta make sure I'm making shots, you know, and then my neighbor started coming over and, and playing some one-on-one, and I started trying to, oh, he's on his porch, let me show out. So I feel like we do these things even when we think we're good at other things. You, you forgot what it was. You forgot what it right. was to you. Yeah, like I so ain't here for that. people forget what it is. They forget that the fact that they're going into to get in good shape and to be healthier and they start thinking about something else. Like right. you were thinking about it's a competition. That's not why you walked out there in the first place no. and picked up the ball. I walked out there because I love myself and I want to be healthy and exactly. I want to enjoy this life. And yeah. I got a dope bass. Like my life is super awesome. I get to enjoy it. Like yeah. That's, and and you know. yeah. So uh, and then the second one, okay. uh, don't overcomplicate it. All right. Okay. So just go like. You don't need brand new shoes. You don't need you don't need workout gear. You do not need supplements. No, I take, that's a huge I one. take zero supplements. I take a green, which is natural. I take an omega three because I don't eat a lot of fish. I take a multivitamin. That's it. I do recommend honestly all three of those to yeah. anybody who's but but again, that shit's later. Like I feel like the, it, the beginning Yeah, and it, but honestly, you know, I think I mean, those are the bare bones. I just started taking those. Like, I, I took a break from supplements for a very long time because I was like, can I get everything from food? And I, I believe you can, but I think there's some holes that I was, a little bit of holes I was missing, like I, I said. It, it sends you down holes that, like, you don't really need to deal with. If you're just mm-hmm. trying to get healthy yep. and live, unless you're trying to be a bodybuilder, all this stuff, yep. you, you don't really need to deal with too much of that at the beginning, right? Exactly, feel- yeah. So uh, just go. Like, right. don't overcomplicate it. Don't don't make it this big thing. You don't got to go to the best, biggest gym. You don't have to go, you know, well, I don't, I don't have time and this gym's not open this late. Like you, you make it so hard that you don't want to do it when it's just like, all I have to do is whenever I have time is go to the gym. Mm-hmm. That's one it. Step. I'm gonna yeah. go to the gym. One, st- one cool. step at a time. Cool. And then when things start to progress, it's like looking at the top of the mountain instead of taking the first step. That's what people do. Mm. You're like, I have to get up there. Forget about it. Which means what? Like, oh, I got to yeah. I gotta put on my shoes. Like, what shoes yep. am I going to wear? Do I even yep. have the right shoes? Yeah. Man, yep. uh, I got to wake up. I got to leave my house. Oh, I didn't pack enough food. Yep. You know, we, we put these long lists onto our stuff. We were talking about when, that. It's, when all it is is just go. Yeah. Like, just go. Whenever you have time, just go. Yeah. And then after that, when it, not whenever you do have time, but uh, consistency and accountability so make time you know so if you allotted yourself time to go to the gym go to the gym like hold yourself accountable with whatever goals that you want i always say life success everything fitness it's everything's custom if you have time 
the time that you made to go to the gym, if you're committed to a certain diet, hold yourself accountable and be consistent because fitness goals come with consistency just like everything else. If you go to the gym once a week, I'm sorry, you're not going to see results. Right. You're not going to see remind you, you how much you dislike being sore. Exactly. It's, it's silly. And it's not going to give you what you want. Right. The same thing with hey, your if diet. That's all, I will say, though, hang up on that real quick. If that's all you got, if you're low and, and yep. that's all you, I mean, I've been there. I'm like, I got to get Again, out of the house. Start. 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 But start. definitely, man, I, I, I'm all for like, you know, setting it long term. Yep. Like make this, make this decision. Be consistent. Stay accountable with yourself and your diet. And again, with the overcomplication, don't overcomplicate the diet either. Like we know that eggs are healthy. We know, you know, somewhat we know lean meat is healthy. We know know broccoli is better than French fries. Yeah. We know, we know vegetables are healthy. We know fruit is healthy. Mm -hmm. Start with those things. Don't worry about how much protein you're taking in. Don't worry about how many square meals you're eating a day. Just calories. P- people really obsess don't over count, calories. Yeah, don't count yeah. calories. Just Weighing don't, yourself don't, to... Uh, don't eat junk. Do not eat junk. That's yeah. It's very simple. Yeah, that's you know, very hard. If you want to take it a step further after that, you start seeing results, you start learning things, you start learning things about your body, mm-hmm. then you can, you know, maybe if you want to take it that far, take it that far. I don't. I, I just, I find out what works for me. I do like to take in a lot of protein, because I feel like in the in the gene department, I'm a little low on the on the muscle side, so I take in a lot of protein, but I don't really keep track. I mean, I know, yeah. you know what I mean. And I just something I just that eat you've, well. You've been so into fitness, and it's been such like a it's a passion of yours. It's something mm-hmm. that you it's your hobby. It's mm-hmm. too you know it's it's a huge part of your life. Not just a lot of people. A lot of people forget that it's like, hey, you're just trying to be healthy and go to the gym and kind of make sure you know a little bit about the gym. Exactly. Like they don't have to know all these in depth. Sometimes, nope. um, just like we were talking about with the podcast, I was like, oh man, I got to know everything about video before I can start a podcast. No, yeah. Oh, I can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. I no. used to do the same thing you don't, with YouTube. Man. You just start. Like, start I don't know audio. how to. It's, I don't know how to start a YouTube. Yeah. I don't know how to. I don't know how to shoot a vlog. Make I don't the have thumbnails. a good camera. Remember, we, we were first texting. You're like, man, this is fucking thumbnail. Thumbnail. But like that didn't stop you. Yeah. Or, or learn how to make the, the art or whatever i had no idea yeah. yeah but you got to start going you learn dude and then you can take a couple you can look back and like oh i have learned those things you don't have to have all the tools when you start in your, yeah. in your toolbox so just getting in you can there, man. you can add them yeah getting in there okay so what about people can we talk over what about people um let's shout out our like super introvert people who who are like i'm not going to the gym it's not going to happen like what, what do I, you know, what, what about getting healthy if you're not going to actually go to the gym, physical gym? I can do a full body workout at home, inside. I, for, for my goals, they're different. I use, and I use weights to, to, to tailor towards my goals, but because it's about performance, but as far as being healthy, you, you don't need that. Like push-ups to work your chest, like push-ups to work your shoulders, planks to work your shoulders, like squats and squat jumps and, and split, split squats and lunges to work your legs. Like you don't, you don't need any of that. If you, if you really can't go to the gym, if you really don't want to put yourself out there, go on a jog, like walk. If you walk fast, you can burn some calories. I mean, even outside of burning calories, I think just get in your mindset, like mm-hmm. going for that walk before, like, why don't you, when you go for a walk, say, all right, I'm going to work out at home. I'm going to try this stupid thing. I'm mm-hmm. not going to go to the gym. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try to just do some push ups and some stretches on the ground for 20 minutes, but I got to get in the right headspace. I'm going to go on a walk mm-hmm. and I'm going to just think about like the positive things in my life. Like, what do I like? You know, try to, try to look for some beauty, try to, yep. try to not go on a walk and just like, oh, I think about my bills and I got to get this workout done and let me yeah. do five minutes of walking and time it. Like, I think Get in the headspace of that walk. And you make it, you make, if you make it a job, you won't do it. Like, oh God, I got to go to the gym. Like, and you almost got to trick your brain in a way, right? You got to trick that beast or something. I, I tell people this with my food. Like people are like, don't you get tired of your food? Like, don't you get tired of eating the same thing every day? And I say, no, because I found the benefit in it. When you find the benefit in something, how do you get tired of it? I go to the gym. It's crazy because everyone thinks that just because I go that I want to. Three out of the five days that I go, I probably don't want to go. But the benefit is, is the performance. The benefit is healthy. The benefit is feeling good. The benefit is the self-confidence that I can look and go. When you put, to me, looking good, it's not about looking good. It's the effort 
that it took me to do that and I'm seeing results, that's what makes me feel good. Right. Is the fact that, dude, you put effort. You went when you didn't want to go. You ate what you not necessarily didn't want to eat. You you prepped your food. You 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 went to the gym even when you were tired. Putting in all that effort and seeing something come out of it, that's what makes me feel good. Right. And that but people fail to see that because when you first start working out or you haven't worked out in a long time is the hardest thing to do. The hardest thing. I know so many people and it's crazy because you know, you we use this like, well, I don't have a trainer. I don't know what you know what I want to do. I see people that I played high school sports with that are like overweight and they're like getting a trainer. It's like, dude, you don't need a trainer. You know what you're doing. Like, mm. I remember, you know what you're doing. Well, and even outside of that, man, we you know saying you don't know what you're doing is in the, in the world of YouTube. You know, I think a lot of people think yeah. that they need the the word motivation is is a little silly. I, I think. You know, and, and you could probably talk on this pretty well because you're, you know, kind of in the world, you're a motivational speaker, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. that, that narrows it down too much. But a lot of people are like, I, I know what to do. I just need someone to motivate me. Right. Yeah. And, and I think I that need that's, motivation. Yeah. We got to well, find just, that in I just here. need the motivation to go to the gym. I need the motivation. Yeah. I just, I just don't I have the discipline. motivation. Exactly. It's not, it's not about, it's the benefit. I really right. do. It's like, I don't always have the motivation. Yeah. I don't, but it's coming up with something a routine like your uh let's get this bread thing right, right. oh yeah yeah it, okay right. so that's your pump up for the day what's your pump up for the gym like people think that it's easy it's not it's not dude i i sh- dude like i said oftentimes i don't want to go but the second that i do my little thing and i find the benefit like okay you need this like mm-hmm. you need this benefit the benefit that i've created in my head on why i go to the gym i need that benefit and so I do my little thing. I turn on, I turn on some music. I sit. It, if I don't want to go to the gym, I sit in the car. I turn on the music and I blast it. And mm-hmm. I sit right in front of the gym. I turn the heat all the way, all the way on. So I like get sweaty. Right. And I'm just like, I like I'm already in there almost. And then Yo. I sit in there for a couple of minutes and I start yelling. And then I just uh-huh. go in. Uh-huh. And I just go in. That's what works for me. People might look at me and think that's... I'm crazy, but I've checked my ego. I don't care what what if you hear the lyrics of what I'm singing. I don't care if you hear. I ain't singing I don't it care right. If you I'm see, not performing I, for you. Yeah, I don't care if you see me sweating in the car and people are like, "Oh my!" Like he's, yeah. he's screaming and get sweating. Get in the zone, bro. Yeah, I'm getting in the zone. Yeah, that's what works for me. Yeah, um, you know, I want to encourage people to do that more. I think a lot of us when we're like, oh, I don't want to go to the gym. Uh, you know, memes in social media and just our, our pop culture has made it kind of okay to insult yourself, right? That like, mm-hmm. oh, my fat ass before I go to the gym every day. Yes. You know, I, I get that because I've been there and I laughed about it plenty of times and life is worth living. Mm-hmm. Trust me. Yeah. But like, be, be weary, you know, fear, fear will sail in on, on the ship of humor often. Oh, yeah. It, it, it'll, it'll come for you. So when you're in your car and you think about posting something, you know, like, oh, uh, uh, trying to get my fat ass in the gym or those sort of things. Just, just chill, man. Instead, yeah. instead of scrolling through social media, thinking about what you post, yeah, turn on your favorite song and, and Nate Tan's and that shit out, out, man. And bang out. Get in the zone. Yeah, get in the All zone. All right, so, so what was that one more time on number three, right, is what okay. we were on there? Uh, what was Accountability that? and consistency. Okay, okay, yeah, let's make sure. Yeah, we, we got that. Yep. Consistency. And then uh, patience. patience. Being patient with yourself. Mm. You're not going to see results right away. And And the thing is, is not only you're not going to see results right away, given the fact that you might not know what you're doing, you might not see results for a long time. Well, I think you're not going to see results if you're looking in the wrong places too. Looking in the mirror for your results and not being like, do I feel a little bit better mentally as I'm walking out of the gym? Yes. That's a win, baby, yes. right there. Yes. yes. Okay, so so focusing on the results is... Is, is, is focusing on the results can or it can be detrimental or it can make your motivation that people need, the people that need the motivation. Mm -hmm. Focusing on the results, like I said, it can tear you down or it can build you up. Finding the correct results and being patient with them. So what are your goals, you know? I think laying that out's important. Um, Finding a target is what I call it. Like, what am I trying to, like if you just say, I'm just in 2020, I'm gonna start going to the gym. Okay. What are you going to do at the gym? You're going to go once and you're going to be like, cool, yeah. you did that. See you yeah. later. I went to see the gym. Next, I'm done. Year. I went to the gym. I'm done. Because your goal is complete. Yep. If I have a goal, and it sounds crazy, um, but I like to put my stuff out there. I want to be the most athletic stunt rider, right? 
there's a lot of dudes that are very, very, very athletic. So if I want to be the most athletic, it's not that I'm obsessed and chasing this false reality. It's that I better get to work. Yeah. So that's my goal. But if you have a goal that in 2020, I'm going to the gym, like you said, you can go once and your goal is complete. I went to the gym. You have to have something to aim at. So what is your goal? Is your goal to feel better? Is your goal to lose weight? Is your goal to to rehab an old injury? I know a lot of people that, you know, they get an injury and they, they oh, I can't do that because of my knee. And they, stop do, and they stop doing forever. it forever. It's never broken, right? Never broken. It's, and they stop completely. Like I know a lot of dudes that are in a lot of shape or they just like, they stop working out their legs because their knee's messed up, you know? They stop and then and they're just like, you're imbalanced. And then you're, and then your, you know, your legs are small and your back and you start having back problems because you're not working your core and all, you know, and all, you know, things that I dealt with, like I have torn ligaments in my ankle three times and my ankle is just absolutely destroyed, but I can't stop working my legs because that's the bigger part of my body. That's the part that I want to improve. You're going to have to learn different things I'm about your legs. You're going to have to learn about the, the muscles exactly. around the injury. Yep. You're going to have to really get intricate with those and, exactly. and tell them that you need the strength. You yeah. Know, but. So, so having patience with yourself, I think yeah. is huge. Like, but you have to, in order to do that, you have to set a goal that makes you do those things and do those steps. But you got to have that patience every day because you're not even going to see real results until you are in it like you see you take a four week picture right or or a two month picture or a three month picture like if you get up and and the second you open your eyes and you're like i want to see results in the mirror right now good luck you're going to get so frustrated yeah and you're going to give you're up. having disappointment i, mean, I think the same disappointment. Pe- people give themselves disappointment like that sometimes the same thing i think we talked about last time about uh, or maybe it was with spencer about how weighing yourself on days you didn't work out or you know that you ate worse like you uh, know that it's likely you're that you're going to be up to fail. it's such a silly thing that we punish ourselves with because even if you're like like what does it really mean that today you're this weight because you ate this thing and then the next day you didn't it doesn't eat mean it. Anything. It's like, do, you, you know, we, we, we don't really follow through with these full thoughts of like, why do I think this means something? Back up and be like, what does this mean about my health? How do I feel? Exactly. How do I, you know, how do I yeah. feel about the way that I look? Yeah. I, I'd never weigh myself. Right. Never. Yeah. Never. It seems unimportant, kind of. It's, it's it a doesn't. normal thing we do, but it's. Exactly. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a good. I did have, I did at one point had a goal to like gain size. The only time that I weighed myself is to see, okay, how do I feel? And again, I've been doing this for a long time. So I think when you first start, do not do not ever step on the scale because how you feel is so much more important than how much you weigh and how much you and, and what you look like. But yeah. for me, it was like, okay, if I'm going to gain size, what's the perfect formula for what I look like, how I feel, what do I weigh? You know what I'm saying? So... If I feel like, okay, I look, you know, I, I, there was my goal was to gain a little size, but I feel sluggish. What's, what's my weight at right now? You know what I'm saying? Right. So yeah, I you got to find what works for you. Yeah. So I don't, I don't ever step on it until I'm like, okay, so right now I like, you know, how things are looking. I like how I'm feeling. I like the strength that I have, but I feel like I'm a little slow on the cardio. I get, to, I'm getting tired a little fast when I'm on the bike what do I weigh? Right. And so I'm like, okay, I'm one, you know, 150. Okay. Maybe I got to dial it back two pounds, you know? And then I start tailoring it, my diet and everything towards that sticking at 148, you know, or whatever, whatever that is. And so that also comes to my last point of in yourself and in your fitness journey and in your physical and mental health journey, you have to be a scholar, like be studying, be studying yourself, be studying your body, be studying what works for you and what doesn't for you. And that's what I had to start doing. Okay. What, what was working for me? That's why I changed my, my workout program because I couldn't be lifting like a bodybuilder and wanting to be agile and be an athlete. You know, it, 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 that's, it doesn't match up. I had to study. Okay. Well, this is all I know. And that's one of the reasons I was afraid to change it because I did not know what is a functional training program look like. I have no idea. So forget about it. I'm not changing it. Right. Mm. People are going to, you know, okay, well, this is what I read and it's not working. So forget it. I tried the Atkins diet. I didn't lose weight. I tried keto. I didn't lose weight. I don't feel good. Forget it. Try something else. 
And they say that I'll try. I tried everything. Is what I've tried. I've tried everything, but you, you need, tried one or two. You things. make them name yeah. everything. I mean, you know, I do the same thing. I'm an exaggerator myself, mm-hmm. and sometimes I'll I'll catch myself. I'm like, wait, what am I doing being dramatic with that shit? Man, yeah, don't, chill no, out. it's not. Take chill. a step back. Yeah, you take try a, step a couple back. things. Keep on trying. That's what yeah. life is about. Don't you dare just give up. No, man, that's crazy. Yeah, and uh, I I had to you know I had to research. Like you can't change it unless you know. And I refuse to like, no, this is what I know. I'm stuck in my ways. This is who this is who I am. This is what I'm doing. I couldn't change it. The second I went back and I dialed it back and I changed what I was doing, dude, it I stopped back squatting because my back is so jacked. I have four bulls just in my back. I stopped back squatting and I stopped sprinting. So you just notice this it's, it doesn't feel it, good for me. It's it not. doesn't feel good for me. And it's like, yeah, that's what the ego wants is the back squat and be heavy and bang weights around and mm. slam it against the thing when you put it up. But but does it go against my overall goal? Is does it, it go against my overall goal? You know, I want to be athletic. I want to be agile. I started doing sprints not that long ago when I haven't ran a long time because of my back. My back started lacking again. My back started hurting. I wake up every day with back pain. I did research. What is a good athletic work swimming? Mm, Talked about swimming, this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I swim. I treat it the same way as the sprinting. I start from one side. I swim as fast as I can. Mm-hmm. To the, and then I go back and forth, back and forth. I treat it just like the sprints, but I'm not putting... I was aging. Literally every step just aging my back because it's not healed yet. Yeah. Figuring that out is what's important. But to bounce back, you need patience to do that. You need patience to see that something doesn't work and to keep going. You have to, right. again, bouncing to the next one. Because you do got to push against some stuff like, okay, I'm getting some pain here. Like, you can't just be like, oh, that's not good. But exactly. you know, yeah. you've been doing this since you were in sixth yep. grade. So yep. you know, okay, I've learned about my body because exactly. you've got the time and you've yeah, had yeah. the patience. And that's why I think all these things bounce off each other because it's being a scholar, right? Then being patient when something doesn't work and then going back up to say, I got to hold myself accountable and I have to be consistent to keep going and to try something else, you know? So I think all these things really, really, they mesh well together and they're, and they're very important for the, for the fitness goals. And I really think that it's something that fitness and having a better, a better, your body's your motor, having a better, more improved, more healthy, better functioning motor. If that's not on your 20, I don't care if I, if, if, even in me, like, People are like, oh, you know, you don't need to work out. Like, you don't need to work out. Look at you could take a day off. Like, it's a weirdo thing. People that is say, man. still You're a weirdo if you say this that. This is that if bettering my fitness and physical health is still my one of my top twenty twenties, and it will be every single year for it's, the rest of my life. It's one of the life. best things you could do. It's a reoccurring cycle. It makes everything in your life yep. better. You feel better. Your brain's better. It's all these. And things. it will, yeah, it will be a reoccurring thing for the rest of my life. It will Absolutely. always be on the top three. For the rest of my life, I think it should be on everybody's list. Yeah. Do you want people to think like that? Like, so instead of like, I'm going to go to the gym once, what could they be thinking instead? Like, let's say they're going to start January. They're going to use New Year's resolutions. That January momentum as everybody else around them is, has yeah. that vibe. You know, let's just grab onto it. It's going to project these people into, you know, hopefully the path of health. So uh, what would you say to them? Like January is coming up. What's just like some simple advice you want to give people outside of expand your goal to just... I would say I want to go back to finding the benefit like because it's not going to be easy especially if you have especially if you're it's not a consistent thing for you starting a new habit is so hard yeah. so yeah. finding your goal that's the first step outside right. like you said outside of finding your goal what I want to say is find that goal set that goal and then find the benefit because that's what's going to keep you motivated so you that's remind yourself of it every day every day so what's the benefit in my goal here's my goal i have it right but that goal might not necessarily keep me going because yeah of course i have a goal to be skinny but what's the or you know or more in better shape and feel better mm-hmm. in my everyday but what is the benefit for it that's what's going to keep me motivated like yeah i know my goal that's great i know my goal there it is i can look at it but What's going to keep me eating the same food every day, right. except for on Sunday when I give myself a break? What's going to keep me going to the gym every day? I know my goal, but what's going to keep me going is the benefit. I'm going to perform better on my bike. I'm going to, I'm going to, the benefit is me reaching my goal. The benefit is of me eating this bl- kind of bland food every single day yeah. is that I'm going to get something out of it. I get a reward. The reward is being healthy. 
you're going to get a reward from staying consistent. You're going to get a reward from taking your health more serious. You're going to feel better. You're going to operate better. You're going to you're going to be better in every aspect of your life because it's just going to boost you. It's just going to boost you. Right. Yeah, dude, in this daily, it's it's a motivational it's a it's an intense thing that you got you got to like all right man come on yep. but it's but it's also gentle yep. you know what i mean it's yep. it's this like i'm doing this because i love you, you this yep. is the conversation you're having in your head with 100%, yourself 100%. like i got to do this like no don't you gotta take those, care of yourself when those thoughts come up that are like you know those negative whiny things and they're like you oh, i don't want to go in there and why am i even doing this and i don't really care about abs and blah blah you got to be like oh yeah, yeah i'm doing this cuz of this thing exactly. oh yeah i want that oh yeah positivity yeah gentle on yourself don't get don't get that self-hate in there either you know all right nate man i noticed you cut your hair it's looking a little shorter Ooh, dude so i have this series that i'm doing on youtube right now i just started the last the first one was uh the last video i posted was with my shoes i call it making room so i got rid of all of my high price jordans that i collected for the last 12 years Mm -hmm. and i'm i realized that the shoes sitting in the boxes were not serving me. Like I had one point been so into it and so into it, but I think that I connected it with this flesh thing, this outside like sneaker, nice shoe appearance. Like I enjoyed getting the shoes. I enjoyed what they represented, but I had, I think I took 18 pairs to a consignment shop and, um, I had to get rid of certain things to make room for other things in my life. And that was like the metaphor of like making room. And so after I did it, I felt like this relief. Like I was like, Oh, I was like, dude, it feels like I'm about to get, what did you, what did you anticipate going in? Like, did you think you were going to feel the relief or you think you'd be like, man, this is going to suck. I'm going to regret this. No, I knew, like I knew it was going to feel good because I'm going to take the money from it. I'm going to invest it in something that I really want to do. I'm going to, use it to go to a seminar or to go to some sort of uh eric thomas puts on a few different things with like different kind of schooling for like speakers or like i'm like it's funny because somebody asked me that i used to rem back him as he used to he like he does oh yeah yeah and he i told him it's funny because i told him i go dude i'm just selling these because i'm gonna buy them back later like (laughs) i like that you know what i mean because because then when i'm in a financial state where i'm where i can do that Mm-hmm. I won't feel like they're the shoes are a burden, you know. Now I feel like, you know, I got a storage unit full of shoes. I'm housing them. I'm paying for them. It's like almost a resentment towards them. You know I mean, what I mean? We kind so, of do that with our stuff, yeah. So yeah, I got rid of them, and now I'm like, I'm I I'm I get getting the money, and I'm like I can put it somewhere else. And so I look I look back, and I was like, what other things am, am are taking space where I don't want them to, and. I cared about my outside appearance for so long and I woke up one day and I was doing my mirror like I always do and I was like what what's left and I was like dude my hair I was so concerned about my hair for so long and uh I'm 28 and unfortunately my hair is starting to thin Mm -hmm. and so I was like figuring out different ways to do it so I was like oh so it looks thick and it looks how it used to but it, it but I but it wasn't laying the same way that it used to because I was so used to doing it one way for so long. Like, oh, boom, like that. Uh, it looks good, right? It wasn't doing it. So I'm like, what is it? It's thinning. So I would constantly be like going in the bathroom, making sure my hair was good. Like, because it's like I cared what people thought. Like I had this persona of this physical specimen that I was so concerned about. And I was like, So I made room in my life with getting rid of my shoes and, you know, a couple of things financially, um, a couple of ways financially, one, I'm getting the money Two, I can, you know, I can shrink the storage unit. You know what I mean? It's lining up a few ways. I'm going to get it. I'm going to invest in myself. I'm either going to, like I said, seminar, new camera, one of those things that's going to help my content and, um, help my life. And then I think this one was, it was taking up space in my head. Like, the ego was still there in the in the way that I was still concerned about what my hair was looking like. So I was like, yo, if I cut it, there's no concern there. Like it's gone. It's 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 gone. Like it's just like I get wake up, I get out of the shower, I still throw some product in it, but I just boom. And I don't think about it or touch it for the rest of the day. 
Now you got more thoughts in your head. And now I have more room, you, making yeah. room, right? Now I have more room to worry about stuff that's important, bro. Yeah. It was so unimportant, but it was something that I is still grasping. And it took, it takes a special person to, to do something like that. Like, I, and I, and it's, it makes me so happy that I'm in that place in my life where I can look yeah. and go, what am I still holding on to that's not serving me? Yeah. What am I still holding on to that's still fleshy? Or, or what am I still holding on to that's, that's, an, that's part of my ego and not part of something that I actually want to do? Right. And I recognize that. And I was like, dude, the hair's got to go. Right. And it was, it's literally just a metaphor for me making room for new things in my life. And, and what I like about it is it's not planned. Like right. that series is not planned. I woke up one day, my cousin works at the consignment shop in Portland. I woke up one day and I texted him. I said, Hey, I'm about to bring you 18 pairs of shoes. And that was it. And I was like, how do I, and I texted you bouncing the idea off of you. And I said, Hey dude, you know, cause we were always vibing, you know, mm. I'm like, how do I portray this in like a message? And then I was like, I think it's like making room, you know, making room for new things. And right, you were like, right. dude, I, I love it. You know, yeah. makes sense. And I was like, to. And so now I'm like, okay, now I'm going to do these on a whim. Like when I wake up and I feel something that is blocking me or I want to make room for something else, I'm going to do it. And that's what I did. I woke up and I was like, I'm going to cut my hair. So I no longer am concerned about checking it. Right. making sure it looks good. Yeah. And the, the man you've had to build though in something, I noticed that you're proud of it too, which is what I like to see yeah. too. You know, it's, it's, you recognize like the, the man that you've been building the, the last few years is now the man who is strong enough to just look himself in the mirror and say, what else needs to go right now? Like not dude. And I can do it. Yeah. That's what, and, it's great. And, and like, and I've I been think building it's, this it's crazy that you said proud. Cause I'm proud of myself. That's what, like, that's what I'm saying. That I can great. literally just look in the mirror and go, dude, that thing is taking up space in your head that so much more important things need to be right. cut it. Yeah. And, and it's, a, again, it's a metaphor for other things. Like what else can I do that with? Yeah. What else can I get rid of? You know yeah. what I mean? And Bro, every one of those little hairs is a metaphor. It could be, man. Exactly. This, and this that, you know, and, and, and a lot of the outside, of, I think a, uh, the outside appearance is what I had to tackle first. I think it was, I changed the way I dress too. Like I, I have, I, I only buy generally black sweatshirts now. And the thing was, is like, I used to be like, oh, I don't want people to see me wearing the same clothes all the time. But what I do mm -hmm. is now as I wear a black sweatshirt every day and I have a white shirt hanging underneath it and I have like two or three pairs of pants that are the same right. pants, right. but they're just two or three different ones. And and now I'm over it. You know, that's what Steve Jobs did. Just saying. Yeah. There's it, a lot of these these people who they, you know, lessen your decisions. Is obviously that. But, dude, it was but so a these, complicated. A lot of our stuff ties us to our old ways if we're not careful. So if I don't care, right? If I don't care what I, what I, how I'm dressing, if I don't care about my hair, like what other, I'm making so much room in my brain for new stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's what the whole goal was for this. Yeah, absolutely, man. I think that we're always at stages in our life and being able to be at, a, at any of these stages, if you're able to recognize that you are at that stage. And so you're like, I'm at this stage in my life, whether it's two or three or whatever that means. But the stage one stuff, the stuff where I had to get these shoes, I had to get these yep. things to make myself at stage one happy. Mm -hmm. That stage one guy, that Nate, he's no longer serving I'm stage not, two, no, stage exactly. three, stage four. Like, so, so it just makes sense. You know, it's just like, what, what can I take from stage one that is a burden now and, yes. and recycle it yes. into, into, into what, what projects me forward to my future? What can give me a couple bucks for my future from my past? Yeah, exactly. I was listening to the, um, the Eric Thomas podcast and he said, change comes from giving up who you are now to what you will become. Mm. And that's, I mean, it, it, in every sense of that, that's, I had to own that. I had to give up like, okay, well, that's the old you. Like yes. you were a sneakerhead. You're not a sneakerhead anymore. Like you were that guy that cared about his appearance. You were that guy that I used to like go places just to show off my outfits and my shoes. Right. Like, you know what I mean? 
I used to go places where I would pull up where I would know girls would be just because I got my hair cut. Like, and just because that was, it was so thick and so, so fresh, it's bro. It's so simple, man. You, yeah. You're such a more intricate and in-depth, in intelligent person than that. And I had to it, get, I, and I had to give all that up and I had to do this so I could make room yeah. for more and, and what's coming to me. You know what it's I mean? beautiful. Yeah. I like that, man. More. Make yeah. room for more. Yes. Start making room in your life for new stuff. Oh, yeah. Boom. Woo. Thanks, bro.